Our heart cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving us this morning. I'm feeling very blessed of God. Feeling very favored of God. We all should when we think of what he has done for us this morning. As our pastor, apostle, get ready to come. May our heart be receptive to the word of God. The writer said we should write it on the breastplate of our heart. And I believe today that your heart will be receptive to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Put your hands together and receive our apostle, Pastor Russell, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. I thank God for today. I thank God that He is my source. He is my strength. He is my deliverer. And in all things, in all things, I must give Him praise and glory and honor for who He is in my life. You must know who he is and what place he is and take in your life. And I thank him that he is the head of my life. He is fully in control of my life. As the Shambhraja said, I surrender all. Amen. And I surrender everything to Him. And one thing I thank God for is for His knowledge that He has given me. Amen. So that I don't live my life. Amen. As the pagans do. But I live my life as a citizen of the kingdom of God. I know who I am and I know who I serve. And I recognize that's one of the things in the kingdom of God. That we don't know who we are and because we don't know who we are we struggle. We don't know who is in control because we think that we are in control but when we know that we know that the king of our lives in control when you confess him as your Lord and your Savior you say Lord you haunt me I now belong to you you hold me I'm now become your personal possession. I am not my own. I belong to you. Every breath that I breathe, I know who it belongs to. Every word that proceeds out of my mouth, I know it must who it must bring honor to. Every step that I make, I know who should honor it. And I thank God for recognizing who he is in my life. And because I know he promises me no good thing will he withhold from me who are called according to his purpose. And when you know who you are and know the purpose of God in your life, and where he stands in your life, you know what? A day like today, it is a day of rejoicing. Amen. It is a day when you come in his presence and you can say, Lord, for 365 days out of this year, as we last year, this time we gave a sacrificial giving to you. And it's been 365 days since that. And if you search your hearts and look into yourselves and 
Look at where you brought you from and what you have done for you in that time until today and you have nothing to offer the king. It is very sad. I'm sure you will there have been many of us have our jobs and many of us get raises Many of us shift positions and God has worked some stuff out in our lives. And if we have nothing to give to our king today, it is a sad picture. The God that you serve, you got to know who is your God and what he has done for you. And that's not why this pastor don't beg anyone, anything. It's about you, your relationship with your king. Amen. You got to know what he's doing in your life. Amen. And if he has done something and you think he's worthy of a gift, Hallelujah. then you can do as it pleases you because at the end of it all, it's between you and the king. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today is a special day in the house of the Lord. It's a one-time thing. Amen. When you have to dig deep and do something. You know, it's been a tough year for me. Going back and forth. Doing things for the Lord and working hard. And the Lord has pulled my job a couple of times. And this morning I woke up and I said, God, you know my finances. You know where I'm at. Yes. But the Lord says, if you trust, faith is a substance that things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. So I got up and I said to my wife, I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm doing my best. Yeah. Last year I had a job at this time. I did great for the Lord because he had done great for me. Yeah. This year I don't have a job. I said, God, not going to make no difference. I'm still going to do what I did last year. I said, you got to make, you got to fix that. That's right, brother. I'm stepping out in faith. Amen. 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 I made a promise last year at this time. I started in a topic. Amen. And I promised that I would have completed, completed it this year. Amen. And amen this year. And uh, it is called the kingdom principle of giving to a king. A kingdom principle of giving to a king. king. And we had part one up on YouTube. So you can watch part one. And I'm going to pick up where we left off one year ago. Amen. So that we can understand how important it is to give. Amen. I said God is going to do some great things for me this year. I don't know about you. Amen. I've been looking at my vehicle outside. I said, God, do you think it's time to give me a new vehicle? And I see what you do. I have a friend. I said, I'm going to go to the car deal. I'm going to talk. I'm going to say, you know what? If you give me a car, you're going to have the best sale this year. I'm going to step out in faith, go talk to him, and say, listen, man, give me your, your pastor your car. You're, you're going to be blessed. Your business is going to grow and multiply. You never know. You might just do it. That's right. Amen. So we're going to just see what the Lord will do today. I'm anticipating great things. I don't know about you, man. God. God, my God is a great God. He's a powerful God. Amen. He lacks nothing. Amen. He lacks nothing. Let us stand and declare the word of the Lord. Amen. This is the word of God. Believe by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. Believe by the word. We die by the word. By the word. This, is the this is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. As we look today and the uh, uh, kingdom principle of giving to a king. And like I said earlier, you can go on YouTube and you can go to part one of it. But I'm just going to look at a little bit of what we talked about last year and we're going to get into pick up from where we left off but God is a giver do you know that? 
God is a giver. He gives because it is nature. God in nature is a giver. And if you remember when he created mankind in the Garden of Eden, what did he give them? He has given them dominion over the earth. Over everything, everything that moves, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. And God has been a giver from the beginning. But when man sinned, our forefathers Adam and Eve sinned against God, rebelled against God, and he get thrown out of the Garden of Eden, God still remembers us. Amen. And later on, uh, many years after, he has a plan. And as the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, the believe verse 4 says, in the fullness of time, amen, God sent his son into this world. Here he is giving us the ultimate sacrifice, coming to die for a hard and fallen race. Coming to reclaim what we have lost and give us back full access. So today, because of what Jesus Christ did, we have full access back to God. We are now right back, just as if we have never sinned. We get, uh, got justification through Jesus Christ. Justification means just as we have never sinned. So we are right back where we started in the beginning, if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So God is a giver. He gives because it is it, it, its nature. As kingdom citizens, we give because we are like Him. So as kingdom citizens, and we're given to God, we're supposed to be given to God because we are like Him. We are created in His image, in His likeness. So when we, it should be in us, in our nature, to give to God. Amen. Just as He gave to us, we should give to Him. Everything we own is His anyway. Nothing that we think we own is ours. And that's the problem that the church is having and the world is because we want to be like the world, but in the church, in the kingdom of God, it's a total different thing from the world. But because we're in the kingdom of God, we get translated out of the world system and we're in the kingdom of God, we still come in the house of God and we still have the world system and we still stick to the world system instead of the kingdom principle that we are to live by. So in order for us to make changes in our lives, the Bible says our minds must be renewed. Because in the world we own everything, because that's what the world wants us to believe, that we own the house, the cars, and all that stuff, because it's our possession. But in the kingdom of God, we own nothing. It's only loan to us. Yes, Hallelujah. We have this knowledge because none of us take anything when we die. It's left here. Amen. And the Bible speaks of the fools who hoard it up. Yes. Amen. And then your kids and all, and people that just come and spend it. And we talked the last time about you, they give it to their dogs. They give their cats because they hoard all this wealth. And guess what? They do nothing with it. And at the end of it all, you got to go somewhere. The banks today are rich. Why? Because many died and nobody to claim their riches. Amen. So we as kingdom citizens, we got to think differently in as kingdom citizens. Amen. Uh, we, we, we look at what happened in the world and what's going on in the world. And we look at the church and, and the world. And, you know, the church and the world should not be the same. I mean, there should be a difference. Where the ecclesia, where they called out one, or at least in our minds, must be different. Amen. And in, in, in the scripture, we recognize here where with David and Bathsheba in 1 King 10, 1 to 13. I won't read that. Amen. Today, but we know the story of King Solomon. The Bible talks about him, how rich, how rich he was. And, and we have Bathsheba who was a queen who she understand the principle of a king and a kingdom. So therefore she was going over to visit Solomon. She heard of Solomon's greatness and she wanted to go and visit this man to see if this man was as great as he say, as he, he was or she heard he was. So while she was going, she did what was fitting and the protocol that should follow. So what, she did not go see the king empty handed. And remember Solomon, the Bible says the richest man. But yet, 
a woman, a queen, and going to see this man that is already rich. She did not go empty handed. She went and she bring expensive spices and all these things she brought down and gave to Solomon. And when she get to Solomon's house and she really see and understand who Solomon is, she recognized that this man was even greater than what she heard. Because even the servants in this man's house was treated as royalty. They were eating at this table, they were eating and they were dressing. They did not get isolated and put off one side. Not like us today think we are wealthy and we have a maid. And we put them one side, they got to sit in the kitchen or something while they have their lavish thing going on. No, everything was set and everybody will come to the same table and eat. Amen. So she see all this and said, oh great of a king this man was, or this man is. And when she was leaving Solomon's house, guess what? Solomon gave her more than she brought, it, she brought to him. Because this is a principle of a king. That's why the Bible says you can never outgive God. Because that's the principle of a king. Whatever you give to God, God will always give you more. That's a principle. So when she brought all this and gave to Solomon and she was leaving, Solomon gave her a lot more than she brought to him because it's the principle of the kingdom. So you cannot enter and go see a king and never bring anything. You can never go to an, a king and not bring a gift because it would be dishonoring. That's what happened to Cain and Abel. They brought their gift before God, and one was rejected, and one was accepted because you got to bring the best of everything to the king. Yes, oh, hallelujah. Today, in the church, in the kingdom of God, we give God pocket change. Amen. We don't give God what is due to him. And in the Old Testament, God has given a regulation and said you give 10% of what you, you, you your feel, your cattle, and all that, you need to give that to him. In the New Testament, he said you give as a prosper to you. Amen. Amen. So if you want to, if you want to give God, and even if you want to prosper you, he knows exactly how much you should give and what you give. Because I can't tell you what to give. Because I don't know your finance situation. I don't know your personal bank account, but he knows. He, you can't tell him what you have and what you don't have. I can't tell him, but he knows. And a, a sacrifice means that it is something that you're giving out of your nothing. And when we look at the, the example that Jesus gave to us, is the, the lady, the woman with the widow's might. The rich man will give him everything. They were giving all of their riches. It was not touching them. It was not hurting their pocket. But they were, they were just giving and they were bragging about their giving because they had so much to give. Jesus did not call the attention to the big givers. He called the attention to the one that was given out of her nothing. And the Bible said she gave all. Everything she had. And that's what the sacrifice is about. A sacrifice Sacrificial giving is not about what you possess and how much you have. It's not about bragging. It's about giving the best you can from your nothing. And if we understand the principle, then we will think differently. Hallelujah. So we as people of God, when it comes to this time of the year, you have 365 days of the year. Amen. And many of us, amen, we squander a lot of money during the year and we forget even about what God, that God has created you and given you that part in the first place. You, you spend it and everything else and you never think about God when you're spending your money, do you? You never think about the source, the one that gave, bringing the funds to you. You go and you buy whatever you want because you think you can buy it and you think you can afford it, you just buy it. Amen. You never, ever, ever think about the king. And when it comes to the time to give the king, you have nothing. And then you have to say, God has done nothing for you all here. Your rent has been paid. 
Your mortgage have been paid. Your car payment have been paid. Everything have been paid and everything is going on. And you don't even spend more than you receive, you have. And you take out a loan. And you just spend your credit card. You do all these things. To make your life comfortable and to put yourself in debt. And at the end of it all, would you put yourself to give an offering to the Lord? Maybe that's when you need to really put your debt, yourself to debt and give an offering to the Lord. Because he's the one that will provide that. Give it, make, put yourself to debt and give that offering might relieve you of the rest of your debt. But it said you make sure you have everything and the Lord has nothing. nothing. And that's not the principle of the kingdom. We talk about the different protocol I think we did last year. One, two, one and two and I started at number three. So we're going to get to number three. And number three, the gifts reveal our value of the king. Now, if you value Jesus Christ as your king, the gifting that you give to him will speak. It will say how much you value him. Because anything you value more than God becomes your idol. Oh, hallelujah. So if you value God, and what he has been doing for you throughout the 365 days this year and one day out of the year this is when you say Lord this I'm giving back to you and I know it's going to hurt right now but I'm giving back because you have been good to me Amen. because you want to place your value and the give up because he's the one that gives the job he's the one that look at what's going on in the economy now yes, the economy is very bad but we are not drawn from the world's economy. We are looking to God. He's the one that's going to protect us. As kingdom sins, you recognize that God will provide for you. Even when it seems like everybody else is struggling, God will make a way for you. Oh, hallelujah, church of God. So we have to have a different mindset. And whatever you give to God and reveal how much you value him. The quality of what you offer the king and the attitude which you offer it reveal much more than our words can tell. We can talk as much as we want, but what you have to do, amen, it reveals your love and the quality of love and the value that you place on him as your king. Amen. So you got to think about what you're doing. What value are you placing on your king? What do you think he deserves? The nickel and dime, the loose change? Is that what your king deserves? You gotta think about that. You know, for many years as a young Christian and I started reading the word of God, I recognized the who God is in my life. I've never put a silver into, a, into an offering plate. Because I find it belittling for me to take my loose change and give to God. So always, even if I have to go to get it changed out into a, a, a real dollar, Paper money, I do that. I don't put coins Amen. in the offering plate. I, I, you know, I, it's not, it, that's just me. I'm not saying that you're going to be like me, but that because I know who my God is, I know where He stands in my life, I know His place in my life, I know my value on Him. So, therefore, I'm not going to tell you to do as I do, because guess what? You got to know who He is in your life and your value on Him. Amen. I know my His value to me. Hallelujah, because I know his value to me. I treat him based on my value to him, and I know he does the same for me. Amen. I have that. You know, like the other day, when I was things, uh, I was working for a few days, and guess what? The funds started to get low. And the Lord said, guess what? I realize that your mortgage won't be paid the next, next payday. The Lord, as I pay my last mortgage, the Lord said to me, guess what? I need you to have some more funds. My boss called me back and he sent me to work. I got my pay. Get, I get to make some money so I can have enough money to pay my next mortgage for the next month. And now he took my job again and I'm now back working for him. And you know what? Every morning I get up and I, every night I come home, I put just like I would mark on my, my day thing. Every day when I go to my regular work, how much hours I work. And the one that I'm working for God, I did the same. I said, God, this is what I put in for you today. So I get up the same time I get up in the morning and I write on my day. If it's 12 hours at the end of the day, I put my 12 hours. I still
still put it because I'm still working for the king. I'm not working for my regular boss, but I'm still working for my king. And I'm expecting, I'm very expectant of a payday. I am expecting that even though there's a zero and I can't input an invoice in in two weeks to collect a pay, I know that he will make the way so I still put my hours in on that day. And I'm saying, God, here it is. I'm not going to my physical job, but I'm still working on your behalf. I'm still in your house trying to get your house ready, and I put my time in. Because I believe he's going to reward me accordingly. Oh, hallelujah. So I need to remind him that I'm still working. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I still wrote my time into my time slot. I'll send him the invoice. Hallelujah. Huh? Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. But my expectation from him is not the same as I expect from my boss. Because my boss has a set wages. But he, he, he don't have a set wages. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know what it, whatever it worked to him. Amen. He will grant it unto me. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm expecting that he's going to do something mighty. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Quality doesn't mean expensive, church. But it does mean offering our best. It don't mean that you gotta do what you can't do, but it does mean give your best offering in this time. Or a gift does not have to be money. There is something even greater, as greater value, which is the gift of your heart. Amen. Amen. Because many a time we give from our finances, but we don't. He don't have our heart. He want us to give, but he also want our heart in the giving. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There is something even greater value, which is the gift of the heart. As I recall, the Lord complained against his people in Isaiah 29 and verse 30. Let's read this. God complained about his people. They were given, but they weren't given from the heart. God wants us to give whatever you're giving. Don't give it and then begrudge it. Don't give it and then complain about it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's read together. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as the people draw near with, with me with their mouth, with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear towards me is brought by the precept of men, or a gift to the king should always be offered from a sincere heart, whether it is monetary or worship, our motives must be right. Whatever you're giving to the king, whatever you're doing for the king, whether work, whether worship, whatever you're doing, your motives must be right. Guess what? He knows your motives. Hallelujah. He knows your motive. He knows your heart. Remember, he says in the home that he chose, he know who trusts him. So he knows your heart. He knows what you're about. You can talk about him as much as you want, but he says your heart is far from him. We are just giving lip service. He don't want lip service. He wants our heart and he wants our motives and everything that we're doing must be in order. It must be acceptable to him. If we don't give from a good heart, he will not accept it. It's in the offering plate, but get what? There will be no blessing coming to you for it because your heart is not right concerning it. Number four, worship demands a gift and giving and giving worship. Worship demands a gift and giving is Worship, Church of God. I want to understand this. Giving is worship. As we have seen, this always involves bringing a gift. There is no genuine worship without gift giving, but giving itself is an act of worship, and worship is always fitting for the King. 
Come on, turn your Bible to Matthew 2, verse 11, and see what it says. Amen. Worship is important. Worship is a heart of giving. And when you give to the king, you must give good, true worship. When you come to the house of the Lord and you're singing praise and to the king, it must be from the heart. It must be true worship. And when you're giving to the Lord, financially, it should be from the heart. And it is true, will not be true worship, genuine worship. Come on, let's read together. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and marrow. Praise the Lamb of God. So when the Magi who saw Istar in the east understood this, which this is why they brought gifts of gold, incense, and marrow to worship their king. So you, I want you to understand that these Magi and all these people back then, they understand kingdom principle. Because here they read about the, the, the prophecies about the king of the Jews would come. And they knew and when they see that star that they were going to a king. They were going to a king's birthday. Amen. So guess what? They did not just go to the king. They go to the king. They make sure they brought gifts to the king because it was a protocol that they bring a gift. They cannot go without giving a gift. Today we come to the house of the Lord and we went out and we shop and we spend all the money we have. We come to the house of God, we have nothing to give. But no problem going out and buy a dress for a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or hundred and fifty dollars or shoes for two or three hundred dollars are looking cute because it's going to make you look cute. You're going to present yourself at work but you don't know how to give God something. The same God will give you the job. The same God who gave you the job, the same God who is blessing you, the same God that opened the door for you to make extra money. Like I said, I, I don't expect people to, I want to be like me, but I know my value to my God, and I know God's value to me. And because I do that, I have to accordingly. You know, for many years I worked into a company, and, and, and I, want, I said to my boss, my boss, this I have the access to work seven days a week. I have a key. And the boss said, go work whatever you want, when you want. And I make sure, I said to my boss, my boss, guess what? You can't pay me to work on the Sunday. It's the Lord's day. I said, you're not rich enough to pay me. I said, my boss, owned, my God owns everything on his, his day. I'm going to go to his house that day and I set that Saturday for him. And even during the week, you notice your pastor never missed a prayer meeting? Glory. And I could work until I worked 14 hours a day, 12 hours a day, but when it comes for a meeting night, I quit working. And they know. My pastor said to me, I know it's your early night. Because I recognized something many years ago. As a young Christian, I'll go and work on a, sun, on a Sunday and a Sunday. And guess what happened? I spent it out the next day because something went wrong. And I had to spend it. So what I think I was gaining, I was losing. Ever since I stopped living my life like that, I've never lost anything. I have money coming. I have $20 in the key. I, 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 until the next day, I still have $20. God has sustained me. Glory. He promised the little that he has given you, he will make it stretch and you will be surprised how far it can go. Amen. Hallelujah, church of God. Amen. So we need to honor our king. Yes. So if we want him to honor us, yes, sir. we expect so much from him, yet we give him little. We don't give him time, we don't give him nothing. Our husband or wife, take our times. Take our time that allotted to him. Our children take the time that allotted to him. Everything has taken the time that allotted, and we still expect the blessing. How oh, does it make sense? The time that you allotted to him, you take it and do it, use it, do 
doing something else, but didn't expect the same blessing. Think about it for a moment. If God were to be unreasonable to us, amen, as the workplace, if you miss a day of work, unless you have insurance, do you get paid for it? No, but you expect God to still bless you when you're shortchanging him. But if you go to your regular job and you're shortchanging, you don't get no extra money for it. I used to work for a company, and at the end of the year, they'll give you a bonus. And you know how I get, you get your bonus? If, every time you miss time at the end of the year, your bonus is less. Because it means you're putting less. But in the church, in the kingdom of God, we expect to put in less and get more. And then the people are putting a lot, and God starts blessing them, they become jealous. You, you can't be like that. You gotta be balanced in the thing that you're doing. Whatever you're doing in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, you gotta be balanced. You gotta make your life become balanced. You gotta place a value on the king in your life. The king, the one that is looking after you, he's your healer. He's the one that wakes up in the morning. He's the one that is he's the, he's, he's your blowing, man. Come on, think about it. When you wake up in the morning, he's his breath your blowing. You, I can't, you think you could pay for that? We got to start thinking differently when it comes to the things of God. I am not trying to pressure anyone either to have your mind because in my spirit I don't want anyone to be pressure. I'm just trying to bring enlightenment to your eyes. Amen. That you place your body at the right place because we, the Bible says these people suffer because we lack knowledge. You see, I, I, there, in, 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 in Jamaica, when nobody teaches us to save. You know, my, I remember our, our, our mother used to have her little saving plan and say, when you get somebody, go put in it. But even the kingdom of God, we need to teach, each, teach our people and our young people how to live and how to give. Because you know what? You should know that there's, you got to set apart money, some money for God, some money for yourself, and some money for your savings. Because we all want to make sure we have some savings. So when you get your paycheck, you got to know what you're giving to God. What is for your shopping? What is for you? And make yourself a budget and make sure everything is in order. And to make sure that God is receiving what you should receive and what you're doing, what you're supposed to do it. And then everybody is happy. You, because you're going to place some value on your king. Yes, sir. It's an important church that you place some value on your king. Worship demands a gift, which may be a gift of praise. A gift of thanksgiving, a gift of confession, a gift of surrendering, a gift of forgiveness, a gift of tender and obedience, art, as well as monetary gifts. Yes. These are all gifts that you can present to your king. Like I said this many, many, many years ago, I surrender all. And we sing the song, I surrender all, all we freely give. I will ever love and trust you in your prayers and daily live. I surrender all. You only surrender a certain part. Your pocketbook is still yours. Isn't it, church? That's the hardest thing in a man's life between God and, his, and man in his pocketbook. <laughs> we hold our pocketbook to our heart. It's closer to our heart than God. And God's supposed to be the closest to your heart because he's the one who blessed the pocketbook. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, he's the blesser. He is the blesser. And you think you can, how can you withhold from the man the ones who blesses? And that's, a, that's a, the, the thing that always amazes me that we one who withhold from the one who brings the blessing. Huh? Free to give, he says. Free to receive. You know, I was here and I didn't want to say this, but the Lord said that I wanted to, the Lord said, I want to check back since this soccer shall give it and look back and look at the church on that day. <laughs> I said, well, I don't want to talk about that. But he's bringing back again, and I want to bring that up because he said, I'm talking about our day, the numbers are less. You don't have the same turnout when it's sacrificial day. It's been going on for a few years. Whenever there's sacrificial day, 
There is not too many present. But come next week and the week after, the week after they start filling out again. And the Spirit of God never lies. Because people are embarrassed but they don't think they can give, right? But it doesn't matter. Come with your worship if that's what you have to give. He knows. You don't need to feel guilty if you don't have it. He's the one who's blessing. And if you don't have it, he knows. Because many will be in here and have it and don't give it. And he knows. Amen. And you'll come and you'll put your infant up there and you might put a third of what you get out for the game. And he knows. Right. So you can't make because of a day like this you don't come to the house of God because you think you don't have anything to give and you're going to look bad you're not walking up there with your fact for the infant up. No! Right. Even come and write and, and, and write a note and say, God, I can't give it this time. But guess what? I will have it the next time I'm believing by faith. And if you come, you can say, God, I don't have it. I might not have this year, but guess what? I am right in this amount and I expect to pay it by the end of the year next year. Yes, and he's saying that's showing that you're stepping out in faith, believing that there's something going to happen in your life. Amen. But it don't mean that you don't come. Yes, right. And the Holy Spirit is always right. I tried to push it off, but he said, no, talk about it. Because we tend to think that if you don't have it in your pocket, you don't come. But you know what? He knows. He knows if you can and you can't. And that's why I can't judge you. You've got to know if you can and don't do it. Because he already know. Hallelujah, church. Give it to the king and trust a favor. I think you need to understand this. Give it to the king and trust a favor. Kings are attra attracted to people who give with a willing and grateful heart. Amen. And that's why Jesus Christ will have called attention to the widow. Because she was given from her nothing with a willing heart. Hallelujah. Jesus was attracted to the one. He was not attracted to those who have all and could give out of their abundance. He was attracted to the one that was giving out of her nothing, church. So you need to understand that giving attracts favor. Kings are, att are attracted to people who give with a willing and grateful heart. Like anyone else, a king likes to know that he is loved and appreciated. You, you like to feel loved and appreciated, right? Yes. But how do you feel about the king, your king? Do you think your king wants to be loved and appreciated? He wants to know that you love him. He wants to feel your love just as how you feel his love. It's not supposed to be a one-way street, church of God. It's supposed to be, all of us supposed to be able to give accordingly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The king of heaven is the same way. The giver is attracted to the giver and extends his favor. Gives open doors to blessing, opportunities, and prosperity. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 16. Let's read that. Hallelujah. When you give to God, it attracts favor. From the king. A man's gift, are we there? Yes. Can you read? A man's gift made what? Oh. Room for him and what? Bring it in before what? Great, Great men. Amen. Those who know the principle of giving gain access to the throne of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving from a generous heart with no thought or expectation of return attract the king's favor. Because it is the attitude closest to his own and he rewards that kind of spirit. Yes, Church of God. This is what he says in Matthew 10 verse 41 and 42. Let's look at it and see what he says. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what? 
a profit reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of righteous man shall what? Receive a righteous man reward and whosoever shall give to a drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple verily I say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward God loves what us to give he attracts the givers hallelujah I explained this before if your hands are like this nothing going to come in it you close your hand, you get nothing more. Keep your hand open. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. And things will always pour in it and run over. When you close your hand, you say, I have enough, I want nothing more. Release yourself so that God can bless your church. Give it to a king, acknowledge number six. Give it to a king, acknowledges his ownership of everything. That's the problem we have in church. When we give it to a king, we are acknowledging to the king that he is the owner of everything. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, kings are also lords. Who do you pay your rent to? Hallelujah. You might think you're paying for a market, but who are you paying? Who is the bank? Yes, sir. <laughs> the bank is your lord. He owns the house. You think you're paying mortgage, the house is not yours until you finish paying for it in the natural. That's right. So the landlord that you pay your rent to, the bank is your lord. Yes. Because you're going to pay your mortgage to him, he still owns the house. That's right. Don't pay the mortgage for three months and see what happens. Hallelujah. They put you into foreclosure, he still owns the house. Yes, sir. So the, the mortgage company is your lord. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Give it to a king acknowledges ownership in everything. Remember, kings are also lords. They own everything in their domain. So giving to a king is simply returning to him what is rightfully his. Yes. When you give to Jesus Christ or to God, you are giving back what is rightfully his. He only loaned it to you to brighten up your life. Yes, sir. Oh hallelujah. Yes. It is not yours, it belongs to him. This is why in the kingdom of heaven we are stewards and not owners. Yes. We got to remember that we're not owners, we're stewards, and we got to be good stewards of what God has given to us. And God has given us many examples of a good steward and a bad steward in the word of God. And that's another teaching that I have to do at some point. All of this was recognizing God's ownership, who is allowing them to use a proper a, pro a pro proper their resources. So here in the Old Testament times, you, you realize in the Bible that the principle, the truth is, it's written in the Bible, the principle of the first fruit and, and tithes. Every harvest, the Jews are required to bring the first fruit of the harvest and offer them to the Lord. The same was to be done with all animals and all the possession, they had to give 10% of all their increase was to be given to the Lord. And all this was recognizing God's ownership and love in allowing them to use and prosper from his resource. So whatever you're using and whatever you're doing, guess whose resource are you using? You're using God's resource. So when you give back to God, you're thanking him for allowing you to use his resource. Whether it's your strength, whether it's your intellect, whatever it is that you're using to gain some finances, it is its resource, it is not yours. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So when you give back, you're saying, Lord, I appreciate the resource that you allow me to use. Whether it's my education, whether it is my skills, whatever it is, it is its resource that you have given you so you can use it to gain finances. So when you give it back, you're saying, God, I thank you. That I can use your resource to gain some wealth, to brighten up my life, to make my life and my children life better, to make my home better. It is his resource that you're using. It is not yours. So when you give back to him, you're appreciating his resource that using it bring benefits to your family. 
Do you think it should bring benefits to him too? Yes, sir. Kingdom citizens should still give regularly as a hack of faith and worship in recognizing that that not only God's ownership, but also his daily provision of our needs, as well as abundant blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Church of God, I want to close this next today, number seven, and we're closing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving a king, giving to a king in thanksgiving. So when you're giving to a king, you got to give with a good heart. You're the giving, giving with thanksgiving. David said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving into my heart and into his court with praise. Be thankful of him and blessed is them. Why? Because the Lord is good. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Is the Lord good in your life? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So we want to enter his gates. You're going to enter with thanksgiving in your heart and into his cross with praise. Be thankful unto him and blessed is them. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. My brother was right here a few years ago. He did not know that he would have made it. Yeah. But God had brought him through his surgery. And today he's sitting in the house of the Lord. He could have died. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord is good. Oh, yeah. oh hallelujah. Yeah. I was in an accident many years in 1999. And today I am walking with a limb and a sore shoulder. But God is good. Why? He has given my life. I remember the testimony of my brother. He was shot. I was there laying and ready to die. He looked to God and said, God, I understand. Give me a purpose. Give me life so I can fulfill my purpose. Today he's sitting in the house of God. He can say, the Lord is good. Come on, church of God. Hallelujah. You're a sister over here who was struggling with her husband. Amen. In that day, she wanted her husband to be in the house of God so much. She prayed that she prayed. Today she's in the house with her husband. She can say, the Lord is good. Come on, church of God. Oh, hallelujah. We need to recognize the goodness of God in our lives. And knowing that if it was the goodness of God in our lives, we would not be where we are today. We enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart and in his court with pray. Be thankful unto him and bless his name because he's a
This is our 11th year going into now. But for 10 years, labor, labor, and labor. You know what the Lord said to me yesterday when I was in the building? He said to me, you're in this house because you're faithful. Church, we're going in this new space because we're faithful. He said, those that are faithful in little will be faithful in much. My brother, we are being faithful in the little. And God is exalting us too much. Does it mean that we become unfaithful? It means that we need to improve ourselves more faithful. Oh, hallelujah. Because there's coming, this is only a least space. But if we are faithful, He will give it to us. He's given us a taste of what He can do. My Lord, I wish you could understand the King. You need to understand the king. You know that your pastor don't have stress. You know that, right? Yes. That's right. Yeah. Because I know if I ever get stress, <laughs> I know that I've started this honor in him. So even when it looks like there is no way, I'm not going to believe that he is going to make the way. I believe two weeks ago, when I said to my wife, this is our last money that we have to pay our mortgage. And my wife is not like me. She likes to worry sometimes. She likes to see everything there, you know? She likes to see that she feels secure. And when that happened, I said to her, I said, listen, let's go put in the money in there. God will provide. That was the Monday. And by the end of Monday, I got a phone call. Can you come back to work? You know what God did? A guy was supposed to come back to work. I, I want to share this. I, I, I trust my king. Amen. Huh? The Monday, the Friday, we paid the last money that we have, put in the bank for a mortgage, to the, give it to the owner. Mm -hmm. And the Monday, the guy came to work and said he was coming back. I never show up. The Tuesday, he never, Monday he said he was coming back, he never came. The Tuesday, he never came, and this, they wanted this job done. But guess what? God moved this man to go do something else so that I could come in. So the Wednesday, when the guy didn't show up, my boss said, but we better get Aaron in here. So he can finish this job. And this job lasts me for three weeks. So this is what happened. Two weeks ago, I paid my last mortgage, but I can afford to pay my mortgage this week. Amen. Because the paycheck come right in time. And now I have my mortgage for next, next mortgage. Because he allowed me to make sure I saved that. And then he stopped the work. And then I'm back right working for him again. And I believe that after my work here, that he's going to open up the work again. Church of God, get to know your king. Build a serious relationship with him. He promised no good thing 
Appelez 8 autres. Don't play games with it, especially with your finances. Because we like to play games with God with your finances, and He knows. Remember the days I was working, I used to get e, e transferred to my account. People to call, call just talk to people and they would send money to my account. Because I trust him. Because he promised me no good thing would even hold from me. He promises me, Church of God, that he will never allow my foes to rejoice over me. He promised I will never be ashamed as long as I stand in his presence and live in his presence. He will never let me be ashamed and will never allow my foes to rejoice over me. I believe it. I believe it. No one is going to ever rejoice over Pastor Russell. As God says so. Amen. And he said, no good thing will he withhold. What he has done for us is greater yet to come. We're going to believe it. Amen. Believe it. Amen. I thank God for my people today. Amen. And I thank God that he is my king and he is very important to me. He's the most important thing in my life. He's my king. I give him the best of everything, the best of my days. It's gone to him every day. I give the best of my day to him because he is first place in my life.